class. How's the derivative going? We are on now section 3.5. So we have done 1, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then it's going to be combined all those things together. And after we finish this one, we are going to do some um, practical applied questions on chapter 4. So keep studying with me. Okay, so today our goal is studying about trig function derivatives. So let's study about our sine function first. What is the derivative of the sine x at x is equal to zero? So we had several ways to approach it. Do you guys remember? We approached by graph, and then we also approached by numerically, and then we also approached by formula, rate of change. Definition. So we get to see all these three cases. So let's just start with the graph first, the sine function. The graph is going to be 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. If I connect, then let's try to find slope at each point. So when you look at here, my guess is about slope 1, here slope 0, and then slope negative 1 and slope 0 and slope 1 again so I see there is going to pattern and when I connect them it looks like cosine function but is it really a cosine function? we gotta check, right? so graph way we see that sine derivative becomes a cosine then now we need to find this one using probably rate of change and approach it numerically so let's try to see this one how do we plug in rate of change? It's going to be sine x plus h minus a sine x over h, and then we need as h goes to zero. So careful, when I look at this, they want to find when x is a zero, that means that this is a zero and this one is zero. So if I write it, sine zero plus h minus a sine zero over h, and I should not forget the limit. So if I simplify, what do you get? Do you see that sine h minus 0, so sine 0 is 0, right? Over h. That's what we get. But what is this limit? Do you remember we actually seen this one before? We actually seen this one before. So what is this? We punch into calculator and try to see the slope is, and then when we found it, it looks like this way. So when you graph this one, it looks like this way. And that is the this piece. So as you see, when I look at this one, can you notice that ah, they are asking about what is the derivative of a sine function at zero? So what is the derivative of sine function at zero? As you see, it's going to be one. So how do you get that one? Well, I guess from my function, but this one we definitely need to punch into the calculator. So they say that try to plug in h as a point zero zero one. So let's plug in my value so this is my derivative right and then I'm approaching my h value 0 0.001 then if you punch in this number all the way quickly sine 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.001 is 0.9999 so when I plug in 0 0.001 we have 0.9999 so already you see that that will go to 1, which is my slope is 1. And then when you take the derivative function, it will be 1. So from here, I want you to see this limit goes to 1. I show it to you graph way. I show it to you numerically by plugging. Of course, you can plug in 0.1. You can plug in negative 0 0.001. But that will be all around 0.999. So I see that my limit is going to 1 as a slope. Then we also show you rate of change as a starting way. So don't forget sine function derivative is cosine x. Okay. Then now we have in-class activities. I want you to do the same thing. I want you to find cosine x at x is equal to zero. First graph it. And second, try to see rate of change if you can get those kind of form. And then third by plugging numbers and try to see where number goes to and then compare with me now, let's look at in class activities how did it go so i graphed my cosine function and then i guessed my 
function of derivative by guessing each of these loops. So I went after I um, draw it, it looks like a sine function with negative. So sine, negative sine x as a derivative, that's what I was guessing. And also you can do it with using rate of change. So I plug in rate of change as it when x is equal to zero. So now my expression is going to be simplified this way. So I plug in number. I wanted to plug in big number, a small number that I plug in 0 0.001. Then that's why it popped out on the calculator. Can you know how to read this one? Do you know how to read this one? That means negative five, and then one, two, three, four, five decimal places. So this number is basically same as a point, negative 0 0.00005. I want you to be able to read that. A lot of um, chemists and then chemistry and biology need to use small numbers and then so I plug in point zero 0.01 just to make sure that my number is okay then I got point zero zero four nine. so as you see that my limit is going to zero yeah my limit is going to zero right so that's we can guess the um, our loop here Okay, so here are six functions of a tree, and then let's try to memorize. So sine function becomes a cosine, cosine function becomes a sine, and then tangent function becomes a secant square. I want you to remember both ways, one over cosine square x, or secant square x, and remember that next time as you get to do the other way around. And then cosecant, and then secant, and then cotangent. So I want you to also double check one more time and see that if my answer of the derivative is correct, just in case. And that's the our appetizer. So let's continue main okay. dish. Okay, let's look at our main dish. And then first of all, do you remember what's the derivative of sine, which is a cosine. And then what's the derivative of a cosine? That's going to be negative sine x. And then what is the derivative of a tangent? It says a secant square x. So let's try to find the derivative of this one. Then that is going to be tangent x is, do you remember, that is the same as what? It's going to be sine x over cosine x. Then we can use our quotient rule. So let's use our quotient rule. That's going to be cosine squared x. And then now the rule is take a derivative and then leave it and then minus leave it and take a derivative that is negative cosine x a uh, sine x so if you look at cosine square x plus sine square x over cosine square x do you guys remember the identity that the, that will be one over cosine square x that's how we prove it so that becomes a secant square x. So now tangent x derivative will be 1 over cosine square x, which is a secant square x. That's how we prove. So let's look at some main dish of our problems that um, I have prepared for you. So same thing. Now I want you to see if you can see difference how many composite functions are there. So when I look at this, do you see 1 and 2? Uh -huh. Okay, try this one. Do you see that this one also two functions? One and two. Okay, so if I want to take a derivative, we said by chain rule, let's take a derivative of this one. So block this one. I'm going to show you this time how I do mentally fast. So four sine whatever is going to be four cosine whatever. That is my first part of the derivative. And then now I have to take a derivative inside times 5 so let's organize 20 cosine 5 beta that's the answer okay one more time next one you have to see that this is written this way so you can use the power rule so i'm using the power rule 2 so it's like an x squared so 2 times whatever right so i'm taking if you are confused, just take a derivative. t squared is a 2t, right? So 2 times whatever. And then now inside sine, if you take a derivative, that becomes a cosine x. Cosine x. So you can write that down. For me, this one looks like a kind of a angle sum formula or double angle formula. Let me see. Mm, anybody remember? This is actually double angle formula. 
which becomes 2 times 2 uh, sine 2x. Which will be better? This is better. Why? 2x is versus 1x, right? You like to have 1x. So there are four derivatives are waiting for you and pause the video and circle first and then compare the answer with me. Good luck. Okay class, let's compare the answer with your in-class activities number two. So A, I got this, B, I got this, and C, I got this, D, I, I have it here, and then E, I have it here. So usually take about two steps, just to keep practice and then break it down. This times this, like for me, I just keep focusing what's outside function and inside function. If you're having a hard time, just make sure you visit me. I will show you how you can do it with all the different ways. Okay, so let's continue now. Okay, dessert. So it's dessert time. Let's start with in-class activities. Can you guess what will be 27 derivative of a cosine? So, which means the original function is a cosine x. If I take a derivative, it will be sine x with minus. If I take a derivative, what do you get? That's my first derivative, right? And then if I take a derivative, I get negative cosine x. And then take a derivative again, what do you get? It'll be back to sine x. Yeah? So when you take the cosine, taking derivative as sine, and then now you can continue. Fourth one will be cosine x. Yeah! So every original one, and then the fourth one will be back to cosine. So starting from cosine then, 27th will be what? So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28 will be cosine x back again, right? So do you see that 27th derivative has to be sine x? Yay! Kind of fun to think about it, right? <laughs> okay, so now let's make a dessert one of the one of the our Applied questions. Ocean Beach in San Francisco has twice tide a day. Did you know the tide comes in and out twice a day? And the depth of the water in wide in meters and modeled by as a function of time as in hours. So the function looks like this way. Let's just grab it how it looks like. So three up. So your midline is a three meters up because global warming. Four point six. It's going to be 3 plus 4.6 makes a 7.6. That's your highest point of the high tide. And then 3 minus 4.6 makes, it's going to be negative 1.6. Then that's your low tide. And then it's going to repeat twice a day. So this is the tide chart. Okay, twice a day. So you can, can you see that the period is going to be twice a day? 12 hours, so it's going to be about 12 hours. Then let's compare this and what does that number do? That shows a period. So I'm curious. 2 pi divided by 0 0.506, what would that give me? So 2 pi divided by 0 0.506, it gives me 12.41 hour. So actually, um, it's a little bit longer than 12 hours because uh, if it's exactly 12 hours, nothing is going to change in the whole world of the global, right? And so it is a little bit off of the 12 hours and then that one peer is above 12.41 hour and then so that's why we have two tides now i want to see here how quickly the depth of the water rising falling at 6 a.m and 9 a.m so if they were observing by midnight let's call it zero midnight then this is going to be about 12 noon so it's going to be around 6. It's going to be a little bit off. As I said, it's not exactly 12 hours as our period, but we can guess around that number. So if I want to measure what is the tide around that time. So 6 o'clock. If I look at 6, if we actually look at it, we can see that it's a tide coming in and out. So my graph is a little bit rough to see. I feel like I'm talking about here. Oh, I'm actually, I think it's a little bit off. Because one period is a bit after 12, so it's kill nine for me talking about here. Then, as you say, I cannot guess. That's why we can plug into calculator uh, with the calculus. Now, if we want to find what will be at 9 o'clock, that is obvious. It's going to be the tide coming into high tide. So here's a rising or falling. That means should I plug in or are they talking about the rate of change? Yes, we have to find the derivative function. So let's find the derivative function. 
then that's me 4.6 cosine makes a negative sign and number 0 0.5060 don't forget do you see the chain rule 0 0.506 you have to multiply so let's organize and multiply 4.6 to 0.506 chain rule and negative pull out sign 0 0.506 and then at that time t is going to be six o'clock so let's punch in and then figure do you think it's going to be positive or negative? I see it's negative number. 4.6 times 0.5 And then set the sign Times 6 Don't forget putting the time inside Then I got negative 2.2453 Okay, what will be the unit? What will be the unit? It's going to be meter per hour. Meter per hour. So about negative 0.2 meters. That's about this much. So at that time, it's uh, going away because uh, low tide is coming low tide and then go away that much, right? So at that time, my slope should be it shows that it has to be right here. Oh, my guess was wrong. I hope you get it. And then, now I want to find what's the slope at 9 o'clock. So we can do exactly the same thing. But let's plug in 9 instead of 6. Then I get 2.298464 meter per hour. I want you to see now differences. When it's 9 o'clock, that's the one of the time it comes really fast. Do you see the 2.29 meters? That means taller than you, actually. That's 2.2 meters. I don't know how much I can put it as a bit. It's definitely bigger than six or seven. About seven. So when it's almost done with low tide, the water is going up really, really slowly. Then when the time is nine o'clock, the tide changed to two meters, which means this room probably about 2.2, 2.6 meters as a ceiling. I want to see that in one hour, if you couldn't get out from the ocean, now a good thing will happen, right? Two meters will be taller than your height. So careful about the power of the ocean. Okay, so I put the same question, so changing some numbers. I want you to practice and then see what you get as your derivative and analyze it, what it means by words in here. How did you do? So compare my answer. The graph will be very similar, very similar. And now I want you to see that at six o'clock, the water is going away because they want to get ready to be lowest tide so it's going away about 0.235 away and then at nine o'clock water is coming in about 1.787 meters per hour so I feel that this number is really huge differences right depending on time so when it's almost full of the high tide then it's not gonna rate of change of the, your wave comes to you is lower than when actually middle of the tide is happening if it's middle there then please be careful because here to here that that will be huge differences as you see plus 7.6 to minus 1.6 1.6 that makes about 9.2 meter differences of the depth so ocean is very powerful okay so this is it about our derivative of the 3.5 and then I will come back with the inverse function at 3.6. Good job class!